Hello everyone. What's going on? All right. Yeah, I was looking for a micro, uh, looking for my micro USB card. I seem to have lost one of them, but it is the one that keeps on dying on me. So I guess it's not too much of a loss. I, fig I need to figure out what the heck I did with it because I can't find it on my desk anywhere. It's usually right here and it isn't anymore. So I might have like thrown it out or something. I don't know. Either way, that kind of sucks. Might need to buy a new one or just stick with the one that actually works, which is probably what I'm going to do. Good evening, Viscount. Good evening. Either way, um, we're going to talk about Cardano's TVL reaching an all-time high, despite the market not doing very well. EU has sweeping crypto legislation, and it's not bad because they actually eliminated the proof of work. Uh, they actually did eliminate the proof of work thing. And also... Um, if the Ethereum merge, that the Ethereum merge is actually coming very, very close, which could be pretty good because uh, that in a few years will eliminate the, the high fees for Ethereum. Although Ethereum fees right now aren't too bad because everything's dropping, but when they rise, it gets pretty darn bad as most of you guys uh, already know. So that's actually what... That is actually uh, on the, that's going to be what's on the agenda today. Morning, evening, night, whatever. So here we go. Here we go. Nah, it's not the end of humanity. I mean, he hasn't launched the nukes. So I think we're good for, I actually think we're good for right now. I wouldn't be, uh, really wouldn't be too worried. I was brave of that one who inter interrupted Russian news broadcast. Say they are lying. Okay, okay. Yeah, it was. She's probably like uh, in jail now. She's probably in jail now. Oh, by the ways, by the ways, uh, Russian media is uh, Russian media is basically Russian state media is actually like doing its best to to promote Tucker Carlson now. Just a fun fact. Holding BTC should be better than any currency now. <laughs> right now, no. Um, I mean, maybe from a standpoint, if you believe in like every, like if you believe that all fiat currencies are gonna die, but I don't really believe in that because like if you like USD right now, like yes, it's inflating, but much much slower than like what BTC is dropping at. But you have to, but you do actually have to, uh, but you do have to cal if you if you're gonna do that, you have to do you you do have to calculate like around what point in time. Like what, like around what point in time does BTC like switch to be the better investment? If you're going to do that with a uh, USD, I probably avoid big cities. I mean, I don't think it's smart to tell anyone to change where they live or like, you know, change their lifestyle or anything, honestly. But I mean, sure. It is a, it is a bit of a, it's definitely a bit of a heightened alert, but what exactly are you going to do? You know? Like realistically, what do you what exactly do you expect to do is the thing. Yeah, so right now things uh, things on the world stage are getting very very uh, tense. It, China China looks like it's signaled that it's it can help Russia, but the U.S. is warning China of like dire consequences if they actually do help Russia. What's the best hedge against inflation? Probably gold, honestly. But uh, but the thing is, like, for us, like, Bitcoin's not bad because Bitcoin won't be affected as much as, like, uh, the other market. But, I mean, if you're really talking about probably gold or so, probably gold. I wish there will be an American who in that interim they are lying. <laughs> if I get through it, will be trying to be public. Yeah, I, I wouldn't want anyone to get publicly executed, but he could be exposed, I guess. I probably, yeah, I mean, like... Look, look, I'm okay. I'm perfectly fine where I'm at. I'm not really afraid of like the, I'm not really afraid of global Armageddon quite yet. I might be like in a while, but I'm not really afraid of global Armageddon quite yet. So I'm good. You know, I'm good. What do you, uh, what do you do for your 401k goes down with the stock market and you're stuck because you're 60, you're not 60 and can't pull out? Well, I don't think the stock market's not going to revive because people are going to be still interested in investing. So I don't think the stock market's just going to die or anything. China values economic spirit above all. Hard to see him team up with Russia. Yeah, I mean, like Xi Jinping, like Xi Jinping is trying to wiggle, like basically trying to wiggle himself out of this one. And Vladimir Putin is basically like 
making it as hard as possible for Xi Jinping to actually wiggle out of this one. Because she does not actually want, Xi Jinping definitely does not really want to get involved in this. But the thing is, like, Russia probably has some dirt on China. To, to be honest, Russia probably has dirt on China. Because I, I do think, like, before Russia invaded, China had to give the okay. And he's probably threatening to basically reveal that information unless China uh, um, agrees to give Russia some military aid. So there's, there's a lot of stuff going on. There's actually a lot of stuff going on here that we don't really see. But that's my guess. That's actually my guess. That's, that's my guess out of all this. Like, basically, Russia has some dirt on China, and they're threatening to expose it unless China gives them military aid. But Xi Jinping has to calculate, like, is it worse to give them military aid, or is it worse to just have everything exposed? Because Russia is not going to just randomly attack China, obviously. But the, the thing is, like... You know, how bad is the information, how bad is the information that Putin has on Xi Jinping? That's the real question. Like, how bad is that information? How damning is it? That's the, that's the real question, you know? And we don't really, we can't, we, we don't really know the answer to that and can only guess the answer to that. Um, have dirt on each other as, as what point one of those cards is forced to be played? I'm sure all major governments do have dirt on each other. I'm, I'm sure like all, like all major governments do actually have dirt on each other. But like, the thing is like, does anyone actually care about that dirt? Like, that's the true, that's the true question. Like, does anyone actually care about that dirt? Like, I'm sure like, uh, like, or does the international community, like, does the international community really care about that dirt? Because we have dirt that the international community don't, doesn't care about. Like, oh my God, you slept with this woman. Like, no one's going to give a crap, right? I mean, unless you're like prosecuting Bill Clinton or something like, no one's really going to give a crap, right? And if no one gives a crap, then your dirt doesn't mean anything. But if China, if like Russia reveals that China was in on it all along, and now is just trying to pull out, there might be pretty big consequences for China. Well, Epstein's like dead, so what he knows doesn't really matter anymore. So yeah, I mean that's the thing. Yes, yes, I I did actually cover that earlier in today's earlier stream. Elon Musk did challenge Putin to mortal combat, man. That's pretty boss. He actually challenged him to one on one combat for the fate of Ukraine. Which is insane if you think about it. Like, literally insane if you think about it. Absolutely insane. I, I mean, look, 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 this count, everyone knows Chinese leaders have many little Lolitas. That's not surprising. Like, realistically, if that gets revealed, no one's going to care. Because everyone knows that they have those. No one's really going to care about that. Honestly, like, no one's really going to care about that. If you could implicate a major current sex trafficking or perhaps implications of uh, release of creation COVID. Yeah, I mean, that's true. I, I don't really know, like, how much dirt Russia has and, like, how big it actually is. What is more likely, a spot Bitcoin ETF in the USA, a second country adopting Bitcoin, or China getting involved in the war? I think China getting involved in the war is, like, the least likely because I think a, st a spot ETF in the USA is going to happen sooner or later anyways. I think there's already more than two countries that ad adopted Bitcoin. So, like, the, s the second thing you mentioned has already happened. Because um, Venezuela and El Salvador both, like, have adopted Bitcoin. Brazil's voting on it. And even Mexico is talking about it. So, I think, like, a second co another country adopting Bitcoin is going to come sooner or later. And I think a spot ETF will actually come sooner or later. Um, China getting involved in the war is still tenuous. Like, they're not going to send, like, troops to... Ru they're not going to send troops to Ukraine, obviously. That's, like, suicide. Uh, what if this is all, what if this is all a plan for Putin to take Ukrainians? Yeah, the, the whole thing about China taking Taiwan, that's really not going to happen. Like, if anything, this invasion has put off Putin, uh, Xi Jinping's idea of taking Taiwan, Taiwan. Uh, you, st you know, this count, like, well, you know what, like, Ch like, realistically, you know, if, if Putin revealed Xi Jinping to be gay, I guess that would be enough, but I highly doubt it, man. Look, I, it, it definitely has something to do with, like, I think it definitely has to do with uh, Xi Jinping like saying okay to Putin's invasion of Ukraine. I really think that's what it is. Like he ha like like he has to do the calculus. He really has to do the calculus though. He honestly has to do the calculus. Was US grants uh, program Eco Health Alliance I was working on adding okay. Axie Infinity. Yeah, but like it doesn't really seem like Putin has that much on like the United States though is the thing. Because, like, the U.S. really isn't backing off. What do you think about the Chinese new lockdown and the effects on the economy? I feel like if Putin had that information, he would have released it by now. His daughter's, but I never hear anything about his wife. Uh, 
What do you think about the Chinese new lockdown and the effects on their economy? It's still going to be pretty devastating. But the thing is, like, if it's within China itself, they can honestly just make up any kind of BS to their citizens saying that it's not a big deal. So, I mean, they can basically just lie to their citizens. It's, it's, not, it's not hard for the Chinese government to actually control that. What is the update with MT Gox uh, Bitcoins? Um, that doesn't scare me. You know why? Because that's been around like every year. And every year there's like some big scare about the MT Gox stuff and then it never happens. US loses top 1.5 trillion as Beijing's Russia smart investor concerns. Well, no, like, so the thing is like, um, the U.S. actually wouldn't lose $1.1 trillion. That's how much China has in U.S. bonds, but we already have the money. Like, if they lose the bonds, that, that just means we don't have to pay them back, essentially. Uh, why does, it's a fiery water. That's a nationalism thing. Like, chi, the Chinese, like Chinese people just regard Taiwan, has always regarded Taiwan as like a part of China. It's just like if another country took like Florida or something. Like, Americans would want it back as well. Or like if another country just like randomly took like uh, like Arizona or whatever, the Americans would want it back as well. So like they like China actually sees Taiwan as part of their country. You can't just like and therefore like it should be rightfully ours. It's more of a nationalism like nationalistic thing than anything else. Does Taiwan really have any resources that China wants? Probably not. But I mean like it, it's just like uh, you know it's just like it's our land and you took it essentially. She has seen the scale of sanctions and yes. Like she does, she definitely does not want any of that. That would be so so devastating for the Chinese economy. He he wants none of that. Well, I mean, like, well, no, 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 Salamander. Alaska has oil, so so we we're not gonna give up Alaska. Alaska actually has oil. We can give up like. I mean, like, I I, I really don't think the U.S. P, U.S. people would actually be get, okay with giving up any kind of land. You looked at the fees expected stock market price of Citibank. What? Or maybe sanctions stopping him? Yeah, well, the thing is, like, Xi Jinping knows that if he outright helps Vladimir Putin, there are going to be massive sanctions by the world. And so he definitely doesn't, like, look, right now China is trying to weasel its, China is essentially trying to weasel its way out of this war. It doesn't really want to take, it doesn't really want to take either side. But Vladimir Putin's like, no, 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 man. You agreed to this invasion, so you're going to have to take sides. So Putin is not letting Xi Jinping off. Putin is not letting Xi off that easily. He's like, you know what? You agreed to this invasion, so you got to like, you know, you got to suffer the consequences with us. And she's like, no, nah, I don't really want to do that. But Putin's having none of that, man. Putin is having absolutely none of that. Imagine if we had to evacuate the United States, where would we go? Mexico? I have no idea where the heck we would go, honestly. I have got no freaking idea where we would actually go. It probably wouldn't be Mexico, though. Definitely would not be Mexico. Yeah, so that's the thing. Like, like China is kind of entangled now. It's trying to de... Like, China is, try China is entangled, and it's trying to de-entangle itself. And it's not that easy, because Putin isn't going to... Like, Putin is not going to let you go. Putin is definitely not uh, going to let you go. We could take over Canada. We could take over Canada, but why? Like, Canada's basically USA North anyway, so why? Well, the Bahamas doesn't actually belong to us, so yeah. Putin ran out of untrained kids from... <laughs> throw in... Uh, USA have a lot of immigrants. <laughs> Everyone will go back to their country. Yeah. Do you think housing prices will continue up forever? No. Like what? Like in what situation would you would you actually have to evacuate the United States? In what situation would you actually have to evacuate the United States? Like I, I don't understand. Like I feel like it'd be like if you had to evacuate the United States, I feel like it'd be some planetary disaster, and you would have to evacuate Earth this that way. By the way, there is a movie called Evacuate Earth. Look it up on uh, YouTube. It's basically like where a neutron star is about to run into the sun and destroy everything, and then they have to evacuate Earth. Yes, uh, the, the the Cardano TVL. Let's actually talk about the Cardano TVL. 
because that's actually kind of interesting. Cardano TVL is at an all-time high. So the, the Cardano TVL is actually at an all-time high. Uh, if you look at DeFi Llama and look at Cardano, you see the total value locked is $276.6 million. $276.6 million. And if you really look at it, that is an all-time high because like it's basically been going up. Uh, even you know, despite Charles's FUBAR with his academic credentials or whatever, no one really cares about that. And people are locking more and more money into Cardano. But here's the thing. It's not Sunday Swap that's growing. Sunday Swap has actually not grown. Like, in fact, the one month change for Sunday Swap is actually negative 2.72%. So Sunday Swap, uh, in terms of like locking value, has actually been shrinking since, uh, the, since like basically launch. MinSwap, however, MinSwap is actually the one that's coming up. A seven day change for MinSwap is plus 72%. So MinSwap is actually the one that's actually gaining dominance right now. So that's why Cardano is actually going up. Like Sunday Swap is still number one with $111 million, but MinSwap has $76.36 million. It's actually overtaken Melb. Moosley Swap is in there as well, but it only has like $12 million. So MinSwap is actually carrying Cardano right now on the way up. So that's actually pretty cool. That's actually pretty cool right there. Like Cardano definitely needs more protocols. The more protocols Cardano gets, the more TVL it, it will actually be able to lock in. So that's actually that's actually really, really cool. He had an AMA today. No one really brought up the degree thing. People don't care anymore. I don't think people, I, I look, I don't think like members of the Cardano fan club, which is like who joins those streams, I don't really think anyone really cares, okay? Like whether he has a degree or not is kind of irrelevant in terms of crypto. It's just, it just looks, it may, it just basically makes himself look bad. It's more of a Charles like ego thing. I mean, like for me, I'm just going to consider that he doesn't actually have a degree that he actually claims to have. I mean, it looks bad. It really, it does look bad that he actually lied. But realistically, I honestly don't think anyone cares. I mean, it's not really going to hurt Cardano. He's not the one, like, he's honestly not the one that, um, he honestly is, uh, he honestly is not the one that's programming Cardano anyways. He's just kind of the spokesperson. So it might be harder for him to actually get like a little bit harder for him to get future partnerships, but no. But yeah, like, I don't think anyone from Cardano really cares. He even brought up talking about interns getting PhDs to join IOG. Yeah, like, if, like, you as the CEO don't even have a bachelor's degree, and basically, like, you want interns to have PhDs, man. Look, PhD people don't want to be interns. PhD people actually, like, want to be, like, a fully paid staff position. They do not want to be interns. Like... If I spent like 10, if I spent 10 years in college or 10 years at a university getting a freaking PhD, I would not be too interested in interning anywhere. Yeah, whatever, man. What, I mean, like Charles, like the whole, the whole academic stuff, like for him is just like all a fib, like the whole academic stuff for him is like all a, is, is all like BS, man. It's all BS. He even bought up talking. Yeah, it was kind of funny, but whatever. Around 100K active wallet. Yeah, Cardano is getting more and more attention, which is good. I mean, it's good that Cardano is getting so much attention. If I, if I embellish my resume and my employer finds out, it really depends. Like, if you embellish your resume and your employer finds out like 10 years later when you're already a critical part of his company and made the company a big success, I don't think your employer will actually even bring it up. But if you like embellished your resume and like it's your second week on the job, yeah, then you'd probably be fired. It, it really, it really depends on the situation. I mean, like it just, it doesn't make, it really doesn't make his company look good. That's the thing. Charles Hodgson or <laughs> yeah, why YouTube banned Richard Hart? I have no idea why YouTube banned Richard Hart. Probably because you YouTube figured out that all this stuff was like all this stuff was a scam or something. Hard to get fired as the CEO. Yeah, I mean, like the CEO's not gonna, the CEO's like not gonna fire himself, obviously. I don't know if the SEC like told YouTube to ban Richard Hart or whatever, or like some government agency uh, told YouTube to actually ban Richard Hart. I have no idea. I 
I guess, now since there's a working product. I mean, there is a working product. It's It definitely needs a lot of improvements. It, it, it definitely needs a lot of improvements, but I don't really, like, he, they do have a working product. Last week, only AD and LTC had an inflow of digital uh, assets. I mean, really, like, in terms of TVL, in terms of TBL, only ADA and Luna had actually been increasing. Pulse Chain seems like a legal nightmare. Has that launched yet? Like, has Pulse actually launched yet? I have not played Elden Ring. I, I've heard a little bit about it, but I have not actually played Elden Ring myself. I don't know how many of you guys have, but I haven't. Although he did admit that his job at IOG is to communicate the community and be at the medium. Well, he's not. Uh, he's not a tech. He's not on a technical role. Open the box because he, like Richard Hart himself. Is not Richard Hart, like Charles Hodgkinson himself, isn't like a is like as we found out, he's not really a technical guy. He's no, he's not, he's definitely not some mathematical genius that he wants to uh, basically. He ba he's not a mathematical genius that like he wants people to think he is. I mean, he's not. He's just not, man. Looks like oil and gold are falling in price. Yeah, oil's falling in price. I think OPEC is going to ramp up production. Gold, I don't really know why gold's falling, but I guess gold's manipulated enough that it could. It, it's just falling, I suppose. So let's actually look at the EU's, uh, not that, um, it's actually looking at, let's actually look at the two events that could actually uh, crash crypto. Because um, that's actually pretty interesting. There's two separate events. One is obviously, one is obviously, um, the first event that could actually crash crypto is obviously the China thing. Like Russia has actually asked China to actually give military aid. And so, and China see, has seemingly somewhat agreed in secret, but the, it looks like that other countries have found out the secret and basically the U.S. has threatened China with like uh, probably sanctions. Now, obviously they're not going to militarily invade China because that's a suicide. Obviously, like the, obviously trying to militarily invade China is like stupid because all, all of them are nuclear powers, but sanctions on China would be both devastating to China and the rest of the world. It would be more devastating to China because China is a complete export economy. And uh, essentially, like, China essentially relies on uh, being sell, being able to sell crap to other countries to actually, like, keep its uh, standard of living and basically uh, stay rich. So it would be very, very devastating to China if, like, sanctions were actually imposed on China. And the thing is, like, uh, Xi Jinping doesn't want to lose his position as supreme ruler of China at this point. And actually, like having sanctions imposed on your country would. So he's got to like he's got to decide. He's actually have he actually has to decide like really really fast. Xi Jinping has to decide like super super fast like what he actually is going to do because if yeah because if he doesn't do anything if because if he actually um, follows Russia he's toast he's like a hundred percent toast. So he's gonna have to make a decision very very quickly. I don't really know what decisions he's gonna make, but he gotta make one very quickly. Hey, Space Karen, I'm more worried about China's COVID situation. They're shutting down major cities right now. So I'll, I'll speak a little bit about China's COVID situation. China's COVID situation is kind of weird because they, like the government has this policy and it's told its citizens that a uh, centrally planned economy can have no COVID infections. So that's why they're shutting down so harsh. It's not like COVID infect, it's not like the COVID infections in China are any more deadly. It's just that, it's basically just that, uh, it's just basically that like the government has to keep this persona of like no COVID of like no COVID infections at all. And the only way to guarantee no COVID transmission at all is like if anywhere gets COVID, the entire city's like shut down. So it's actually very, very much devastating for the economy. But the, the Chinese like the, the Chinese uh, government can't lose face. And because the, the fact that they can't actually lose any face they're basically going to be, they're basically willing to sacrifice the economy and everything just so they can keep up their persona. Is it dumb? Yes, it's incredibly dumb. But you know, like when you're a centralized plan economy and you practice and you promise citizens certain things, you have to deliver and that causes you to do really, really dumb things. So yeah, I mean like that's why China is actually shutting down cities. It's not because their version of COVID is any different or any worse than ours. It's because they promise people over there that there's going to be no spread of COVID at all. And since they promised that, they kind of have to deliver. And the only way to deliver is to shut everything down. Uh, and China and Russia are going to news no because we have classified drones that go. Well, 
the, the thing is, like, there's we don't really have a good way to stop the nukes. So the, the thing is, like, both look. The reason they don't nuke us is because they know that we can actually nuke them. They know that they will be completely destroyed if they try to destroy us. It's mutually assured destruction right now. It's actually mutually assured destruction right now. Yeah, Peggy Johnson, at this point, I'm just seeing COVID as more of a flu shot. Is HBAR a good coin? It's not bad. I'm not going to say it's bad, but I don't know if any, I don't really know of any apps running on HBAR. So is it one of my favorite coins to invest in? Probably not. Like, um, I would actually, I mean, I would put Terra Luna first right now on my list, and then I would put Polygon second on my list right now for investing, at least like right now, because Terra Luna has a lot of great uh, yield farming options. It's still growing. And Polygon, you know that uh, a lot of Ethereum apps are going to switch over to it. I have a bunker about 50 feet below ground, so I'm okay. Once the nuclear cat is out of the bag, game over. Yeah, like once, if you start launching nukes, it's game over for the world. Does Luna keep going up from here? I mean, it's not going to go in a straight line up. No, nothing goes in a straight line up, obviously. Obviously, nothing goes in a straight line uh, straight up. But I, I do actually think that uh, it is going to go up. It's not all of it. China's vaccines are not very effective. It's not a big deal for us because most people at this point are vaccinated. So most people in China are vaccinated too. And that's because they're like, they have to get vaccinated. You don't actually have a choice in China. Like it's like mandated, like they don't have these congressional issues of like, oh, Congress says this vax mandated, uh, man, uh, max vaccine mandates are unconstitutional. No, no, no. If Xi Jinping says you're getting the vaccine, then you're getting the vaccine. So like mo almost most of China is vaccinated, but yeah, you're right. Their vaccines kind of suck because like their vaccines are the, like the, the basic vaccines. They're not like the MRNA, mRNA ones. So they're not quite as effective as ours. So like there, it's easier for it to spread in China because of that. Algo, I actually really like Algo. They're working on inhalable antibodies that provide broad-based protection of COVID. Already got positive. Nice, nice, nice. But from getting from mice to humans is a long shot. It is, it's still a long way, though. Hopefully, they can get it soon. That way, the people are... that Paul, that way, the people that are actually afraid of needles can just inhale something, if they're even willing to do that. Doubt if China wants to get involved with Ukraine. Yeah, they don't want to get involved with Ukraine, but Putin's kind of forcing their hand. Putin's definitely got, like, Putin probably has some dirt on Xi Jinping, man. Like, if he didn't have dirt, if he didn't have dirt on something, like, Xi Jinping would say no. Like, she's, like, pretty stupid, but he's not that stupid. Like, she is pretty stupid, but he actually is not that stupid at all. Algo price has been dropping daily. So, Algo is another one of those academic coin things. Um... I actually think it's a pretty good token, but the thing is right now, since we're in kind of like this bear market, it, even if Bitcoin trades sideways, trade sideways, I do think the rest of the cryptos are going to go down. Hearing about the inhalant COVID pro. Yeah, it, they're working on it. They've been working on it for a while. They definitely have been working on it for a while. So let's actually talk about the second thing that can actually drop the market. And that is like the Fed. That's actually the Fed. Um, and let me explain that. that. So like, we know for a fact that they're going to raise interest rates 25 basis points this week, but that's actually not why they could actually cause the market to drop. Everyone already expects a 25 basis point rise, so them actually raising the interest rate 25 basis points doesn't actually do anything. That's already priced in. But what they're what people are actually uh, pe what people are trying to guess is like what are they going to do in May? And this meeting could this meeting could actually determine what they're actually going to do in May. So in May they're going to raise the interest rates again at least. 25 basis points. The question is, are they going to, in the question is in May, are they going to raise the interest rates 25 basis points or 50 basis points? If it's a 25 basis point thing in May, then it's not a big deal. But if it's a 50 basis point thing in May, then it could definitely drop the markets. And there are preliminary indicators that the Fed is still hawkish on interest rate rises. China is too into doing business to have war to get in the profits. That's true. I, I don't think, like, I, I don't really think China will really, really get involved. But, like, Putin definitely has, like, I, I'm sure that Putin has an agreement with Xi somewhere in the works. I'm not really sure. So, the thing is, like, the interest rate thing is pretty interesting. It depends how hawkish or dovish the, uh, the, the, the Fed is on future interest rate rises. I mean, like, the, the next one, like, this one this week is already priced in. The, there's, there's no deal for that. Like, you can't stop this, this week's uh, interest rate hike from ha happening. Like, you're just going to have to live with this week's. But it's a question of, like, what will they actually do next week? It's probably going to be like a flu shot, but the CDC is calling it a fourth one. It's more or less, it's going to be like a, it eventually will be like a year. My guess, it's eventually going to be like a yearly shot. That's my guess. How many times are they raising rates this year? Um, 
I think anywhere from three to seven. I don't really know how many times. Because like the Hawks say seven, but the Doves would want to say like three or four. My guess is going to be around four or five. That's my guess. But I don't really know how fed, how hawkish or dovish the Fed is. And if they actually like, if they actually meet this week and say they're really hawkish, then like we're probably going to drop. I mean, if they say they're really hawkish, then we're really, really going to drop. Sure, she could take a couple sneaky jabs at the West, though, just for yucks. I'm sure she will take jabs at the West. That's not a problem. Like, I don't really care if Xi Jinping takes jabs at the West. That's pretty much expected anyways. I just really care if he... I just don't want him to start sending aid to Russia. Because that could really, really escalate the conflict and basically plunge the world into, like, a global economic crisis. I mean, we might be heading towards one anyways, but that would definitely plunge it into more of a crisis if he actually did that. Xi Jinping also knows that, and he doesn't want that either because he wants growth in China. I wouldn't rule anything out for Xi. I think the CCP about... I think the way the CCP think about things are different from normal people. They do, but the CCP knows that as long as things are... Peace but, but the CCP also knows that as long as things are actually peaceful and, uh, you know, the economy keeps growing, they're going to be okay staying in power. They know that if there's like, they know if, uh, that if a lot of random crap actually happens and the economy goes to crap, then they're not going to stay in power. So they want the economy to stay, they want the economy to stay stable for sure. Yeah, the goal of the CCP is to keep their rule in China, but part of that does actually rely on the people uh, being satisfied. If the people are pissed off at them all the time, if, if, like, if the people are pissed off all the time and they have to suppress people using the army, the army could revolt at any time, you know? Like, that's when, you're, that's when your hold isn't ironclad. China might because they know that NATO is helping Ukraine, but China can't actually, like, but, but China can't actually fight NATO. If the Fed raises by 50 basis points, uh, would our drop be because sell cover depth? Maybe. I, I don't, you know, the thing is, like, 50 basis points, honestly, if you think about it, is not a lot. So I don't think it would actually force people to sell to cover debt positions, no. But I think, like, people would just be more bearish. Sanctions messing with capitalism? The reason why China is increasing censorship to eliminate Western influence? What better way to do it than go to war for the with, uh, for the West? Maybe not actual, but something similar to Cold War? Yeah, but China can't afford sanctions. Like, China, Gary Wu, China's, e China's like entire economy is essentially like selling crap to the West. That's like essentially their entire economy. So they can't actually afford Western sanctions. Like, if we don't buy their crap, who's going to buy their crap? The thing is, like, China's not a... Con Unlike us, China is not a consumer economy. Yes, more Chinese people are richer now and they can buy stuff, but they're not there yet. Like, a lot of their GDP is actually selling crap to the West. Like, and the U.S. is like their big, the U.S. honestly, like, is their biggest market. Like, they can't, like, China can't actually afford to lose its biggest market at all. If China actually lose its, loses its biggest market, then they're kind of screwed. I don't really care about Steven Seagal. Steven Seagal is completely useless. Steven Seagal is not relevant right now. Is VeChain still a good investment? Because they're pretty much related to China. I still think it's an okay investment. I mean, like I'm, st I still have VET and I'm still yield farming. I think it will go back up with everything else. VeChain is also trying to diversify out from China. Like they just opened a headquarters in Europe, so like they actually opened a set second headquarters in like Ireland or something, which is kind of strange. I guess they wanted to like control their European division from Ireland. Does China have a big farmlands like we do? China doesn't have nearly as much arable land as the U.S. China actually has less arable land than, like, India. Better to wait and see if World War III starts before buying crypto. Well, the thing is, like, it doesn't really matter. Because well, if World War III starts, we're probably going to die anyways, whether we have crypto or not. So it's kind of like, so it's kind of a moot point. You know, you know like, surprisingly, there's only a small part of China where you can have large rice fields. Like, most of Western China is pretty much useless because it's all mountains and desert. Uh, but the CCP, um, yes, you've been able to you've been able to farm v v chain since last November. I I've actually made a couple thousand dollars farming V chain. Well, I haven't claimed it yet, but I, I have a couple hundred thousand dollars in store for farming V chain. But the CCP doesn't care about it. It's okay for the people to suffer if it means to keep their rule. Yeah, but if the people are always pissed off at them and there's like and there's starvation and quality of life goes down, the people will actually revolt. The thing is, they can blame the West, but Gary, well, you can only do that up to a certain point. Once, like, the living standards fall below a certain point, you're going to have riots everywhere. And at some point, the military is going to, like, reninja on you. And once that happens, you're screwed. 
always buys a lot of beans and wheat from the Midwest. Yes, China buys like China buys a lot of the wheat and like uh, rice market. Realistically, uh, farm dot uh, farm dot v exchange dot com. That's the uh, like you, like you can farm over at v exchange dot io. Are you gonna farm mine swap min swap? I might think about it. Either Sunday or min, and I'm looking at going with min swap right now. Like they like min swap still hasn't listed on any exchange yet. I don't know if Sunday swap has either. No, like China doesn't want World War Three either, because World War Three might throw them out of power. Look, they understand. Like China understand. Like the government in China understands that they really need stability. Because the, the thing about like a authoritarian government is that like as long as things stay stable and life is good, their power is guaranteed because no one's going to revolt. Remember, if people get tired of the Chinese government, like if if people actually get tired of the Chinese government, they don't have a way to get rid of the Chinese government. They don't have an election every four years. They have to revolt and get rid of the government. Uh, what is going on with UVSD? Not much. They they launched VUSD today. Like, like they, they launched VUSD, but I'm waiting for the staking pools to come out. They say they're going to have a 50% staking pool with VUSD. I'm, I'm waiting for that to actually happen. Uh, look, nice, nice. It's all about business. Dead people are bad consumers. It's not dead people. It's just like if, if the U.S. stops trading with China, China has nowhere to sell their crap, essentially. Uh, you can trade ADA for min and Sunday swap. Yes. Yeah, yeah. VExchange.io has uh, VExchange.io, like a lot of other DEXs, has has yield farming options. Yes. Yeah, Vex has far yield farming options. They've had it since November. I've I've been I've been yield farming successfully for like four months now. It's been pretty good actually. So let's actually look at uh, let's actually look at the at, e, at the EU sweeping crypto legislation. The the sweeping crypto legislation. Um, do you choose the par stablecoin pairs usually? Uh, no, like the VUSD pair isn't there yet. They'll have it soon. But uh, I'm actually with VET Vex. I'm looking for VET. I'm actually using VET VEX. So let's actually talk about the EU sweeping uh, crypto legislation. Yeah, but we can just move those. We can move those factories elsewhere, though, is a thing. So we have uh, from CoinDesk the EU. Like this is the, like um, this is the uh, legislation that doesn't have the ban on POW coins. So uh, rejoice, people. So the committee, so like that's the article. The committee earlier voted to remove a provision that sought to limit the use of cryptocurrencies that rely on energy intensive consensus mechanisms known as proof of work. So the POW ban was taken out. Instead, the committee voted in favor of an alternative provision that would require the European Commission, which is the body in charge of proposing new legislation, to come up with a legislative proposal to include the e in the EU taxonomy for sustainable activities any crypto asset mining activities that contribute su substantially to climate change by uh, January 1st, 2025. So that's basically been pushed back by three years. So we're actually okay with that. The provision was adopted with the goal of reducing the high carbon footprint of cryptocurrencies. Proof of work has come under heavy criticism from regulators and politicians around the world over energy concerns. So this is like, you know, continuing worry of proof of work. And this is one of the reasons that Ethereum is actually moving to proof of stake. Some EU leaders are concerned that renewable energy may be channeled into sustaining cryptocurrencies like Bitcoin instead of national use. So they, they, actually, they obviously don't want to fry the grid. European Parliament members stress that other industries, video games and entertainment industry, as well as data centers, also consume energy resources and are not f climate friendly. So they actually have a point. They're basically like stating that like other things aren't uh, climate friendly and we don't really do anything about this. They call for the commission to work on legislation addressing these issues across different sectors, the statement said. The Mika draft will now move on to further negotiations with EU governing bodies. So this new sweeping legislation is called Mika. It's gonna set a bunch of like it's gonna set a bunch of like uh, stuff. It's actually gonna set like a bunch of technicalities and rules for cryptocurrency. So basically, like it'll actually have provisions of like what you need to do to trade and issue cryptocurrencies and how to make it easier for crypto uh, companies to expand. They're gonna make like a European passport for basically crypto firms. And of course, they're going to try to fight like money laundering and tax evasion, which means privacy is probably going to go out the window, which some of you may not like, but they're going to make it easier for crypto companies to expand. And that's probably good for coins altogether. 
So that's kind of like Europe, Europe's like uh, Europe's like big like um, sweeping crypto legislation. And let's actually cover the Ethereum stuff before I forget, because I'm sure some of you are actually interested in the Ethereum stuff as well. So basically, um, Ethereum merge is edging closer with final Clin testnet launch. So Ethereum, um, Ethereum is actually going to, Ethereum is actually edging closer. Ethereum's edging closer to the final uh, uh, Clin testnet launch. So the Clin testnet is the final public testing phase before the long-awaited Ethereum merge and the end of proof of work consensus. Okay. The much anticipated merge on the Ethereum network is another step closer to becoming a reality after the final public testnet CLIN la launch to put it through its paces. On March 14th, the Ethereum Foundation urged network stakeholders to run tests using CLIN to ensure a smooth transition to on existing public testnets. We strongly recommend that developers run through a full testing and deployment cycle on CLIN and report any issues. So this is the final test uh, public testnet before they move to proof of work. I mean, proof of stake. So Ethereum is switching to proof of stake probably sometime late this year. They could delay it again, but right now it's late this year. So Ethereum developer Tim Baiko confirmed that Clan has gone live and will soon be ready to merge with the Beacon Chain in March 14th tweet. How soon is soon? I have no idea. Probably within the next few months. The testnet launch date, uh, uh, the testnet launched late last week in proof of work mode only. So Tim Baiko, who's an Ethereum developer, said, Clin, uh, Clin, uh, I'm just going to call it, I don't know how to pronounce that, K-I-L-N, Clin, uh, Kin, I'm going to call it Clin, screw it. The next iteration of Ethereum merge testnets is now live. Highly recommended that node operators, application developers, stakers, tooling info providers test their setups on the network. Blog post has all the information to get started. So I don't really know why they make it really hard to pronounce. Why can't they just call it like goop or something? But whatever, it's, uh, it's, it's basically here. It's finally here. So announcing the Clin merge testnet, the Kintsugi merge testnet, the Kintsugi merge testnet launched late December has been a valuable testing ground for the merge. Though through various testing suites, multi-client devnets, shadow forks of Gorly, application deployments, and the community's help testing merge, we've arrived at a set of stable and robust protocol specifications. Now that clients have implemented these latest specs, a, a successor to Kintsugi. Uh, Clin is being launched. Like the Ethereum mainnet, Clin's execution layer was launched under proof of work in parallel with the beacon chain running proof of stake. Clin's full transition to proof of stake is expected early next week. So essentially, like they're going to merge together. I, I suppose, well, I guess like it's not months from now, it's like next week. I, I suppose it is next week when they're going to actually do the merge. Will there be any problems? I'm not really sure. If you are reading this post after March 17th, the merge has likely already happened on Clin. So essentially, this is the full merge. And March 17th is Thursday, so uh, basically Thursday is the merge. So that's the big date. Uh, Clin is expected to be the last merge testnet created before existing public testnets are upgraded. So basically, like, they're upgrading this, like, uh, merge testnet. And then they're going to upgrade the public testnet. And then they're going to upgrade the mainnet, which is probably going to happen later this year. Okay, so this Thursday is this Clin testnet. And then the merge is going to be on the public testnets and then mainnets. Applicating and tooling developers, node operators, and infrastructure providers and stakers are strongly encouraged to test on Clin to ensure a smooth transition on, it, on existing public testnets. Uh, Kintsugi, the previous merge testnet, will be depreciated in the coming weeks. So the easiest way to get started using Clin is you visit the network's landing page. Let me actually just give you the Ethereum blog link in case you're interested. I don't know how many of you are Ethereum testers, uh, but let me actually just link you uh, just in case you are and you haven't really read this yet. So that is the thing on Ethereum Clen. So the merge is finally happening. How long it will take is really anyone's guess. But yes, people, it is actually finally happening. Ethereum is slowly trusting, but Clen is only a testnet. It will take a while before they can merge the mainnet. That uh, that's that pronounces Kern or Kreen or in Dragon Ball. I see, I see. Dude, they should just make it easier to pronounce for people. They should be like, they should be like Vlad or something. Wouldn't it be hilarious if they named their, like, testnet Vlad? Or Putin? Uh, glass pipe NFTs thing? So this isn't, no, this isn't the real thing. The real thing is still somewhere far off in the future. This is the last merge testnet. After the merge testnet, they have to, they have to integrate the public testnets. And then after the public testnets, they can finally do the mainnet. So it's probably still going to take a while. Probably still going to take a while. 
ABAX ex ex chain that uses UTXO doesn't have TX at all. I see. You never had to make bowls in shop class. I don't know. I I think like low roller scratcher finally realized that he was never gonna be a mod, and that he was just kind of annoying everyone. So he kind of like left after a while. Like I just like stopped paying attention to him after a while. I think he was just. I think he just wanted to. I think he just came here for attention, and he got really annoying after a while. Also, he didn't pay his tribute. For annoying, like for annoying people like him, they have to pay tribute, and lots of tribute to stay on board, and he did not pay tribute. He doesn't like, he didn't really, honestly, he didn't really add anything to the discussion. So yeah. So the main net would be called, I don't really know what the main net's going to be called. Be hilarious if it was called Bong, but I have no idea what it's actually going to be called. No one really knows what this, th like, I don't really know what the full timeline for ETH is, and I don't really think anyone else does either. Tribute to the Enu gods. Yes, you should give me more Hosky, because you know Hosky is worthless anyway, so you should just give it all to me. I don't, I think Mexican Charlie Lee has actually given me tribute before. No one's giving me no one's giving me tribute tonight though. So like I think Mexican Charlie Lee has actually given me tribute before. So he's okay. I did see him once. We were we were on the George stream. Does he actually go to the Cryptos or Us stream that often? I'm not really sure how much George actually interacts with the audience. I haven't really been to a stream in a while. We have plenty of lackers, I see. The thing is, like, uh, yeah, Ethereum's been more, like Ethereum's been more delayed than Cardano, but there's so many projects on Ethereum like 1.0. That's why people don't bag on Ethereum quite as much. June 9th through 12th is the next big HFC for Cardano. Yeah, that's why I say like I'm gonna wait like three months before I'm bullish on Cardano again. I'm just gonna keep like doing my I <clears throat> I'm gonna keep doing my ISPOs on Cardano, but it's gonna be a while before I'm like super bullish on Cardano again. Because like they really need that they really need the HFC to really like jack up the block size to, for the scaling. I mean, without the scaling, like without the scaling, they can't really be that fast and they can't really be that cheap. Hydra's not going to be ready for a while, so they like Hydra and like Gogan. I mean, uh, Basho isn't going to be ready for a while. So are you going to like Ethereum now? No, because Ethereum's still going to take a couple of years to reach completion. Here, George likes to more than 2,000. Yeah, like he has like 6,000 people on the stream. So it's actually, it's going to be hard for like to, uh, for, for him to answer people. I've been binge playing Fallout. I see. Man, I wish I had thousands of people on this stream. That'd be awesome for me. Am I like, uh, I'd actually like make more money that way too. Without even having people like give tribute. I think George probably has the most popular stream in crypto right now. I mean, unless like Elon Musk streams or something, or like one of the big celebrities stream. Like, I think George probably has the most popular crypto stream. He's the, that's the one thing Cardano has. I have HFC merging the test net and mainnet is as simple as one epoch, not like eight months of sh moving stuff. Yeah, Cardano is actually designed it to where it's like really easy to merge stuff. Elon has like a sixty nine percent chance of beating Putin. Maybe. I mean, like, the thing is, like, Elon Musk is a lot younger. I'm sure Putin was, like, pretty tough back in the day, but he's, like, 70 years old now. You need more mods or I need to switch to doing speed to keep up? Probably. Kronos is barely behind Polygon. Most under... You know, you're right. Kronos could actually be pretty underrated. We'll have to see, like, we'll have to see how the TVL keeps developing. But Kronos is pretty, like, Kronos could be... Kronos is pretty uh, underrated. We are George has three. I thought it was only two. I, I thought it was only really two streams. Uh, 100 views on Twitch because he got banned. Then his channel got back during the bull run. That's how he got popular. I suppose. I suppose. Make S3 a mod maybe. I don't actually think either. I think like I made someone a mod once and they didn't actually want to be a mod. So, you know, if you don't want to be a mod, you don't have to be a mod. Check out the elephant, please. What elephant? Uh, he does a market open stream now with his stock market. Okay, I mean, I don't really do the stock market thing. 
Uh, does Cronus uh, will pump super high when BTC? But his, but like George's streams are also like George's streams are also much shorter than mine though. Is the thing like like two of his streams is basically one of mine has a bunch of sponsors. He would wear a uniform like NASCAR racer. Hey, if someone wants me to wear a uniform, I will wear a freaking uniform. What is elephant token? I mean, look, if you're just trying to like shill your token, I'm I'm not really gonna bother looking at it. If you're just trying to pump your token, I'm not going to bother looking at it, man. Like, I, I, there's like so many, to there's so many tokens here that, like, just because I show it on the stream, no one's actually going to buy it. Um, his stream are like 35 minutes. I give it back because I can't stand babysitting, I, I swear. Is uh, crypto.com right? Are they changing the name now? Kronos is just like the underlying uh, blockchain for crypto.com, yes. Well, I mean, that's kind of what it sounds like. Big E32, that's kind of what it sounds like. I, I don't know what Vader is. Is that like some kind of Darth Vader thing? You know what? I'll, I'll just look at Vader. Look, if it's some small, if it's a really, really small coin, I really don't care. Because like, it's not, it's, it's not stable enough and it's not safe enough for me to actually be interested in. I mean, 60, 68 million dollar market cap. Basically, just going downward right now, but that's true for all coins. Vader is a decentralized liquidity protocol that anchors a slip based fee. So it's, it's it looks like it's another DeFi thing. I mean, I'm just not really that sure about these like small protocols. I, I think they're going to have a very hard time actually competing. I mean, if you know, like, if you if you know something that we don't know about this, maybe. But there's a lot of things that have. There's actually a lot of things claiming to be the future of decentralized liquidity. I don't really think this is like any different than anything else. Like, all of like literally like all of these things. Maybe besides many uh, these many synthetic uh, uh, synthetic assets. Like the rest of this stuff, like everyone already has. is trying to do the same thing as Luna, but a low cap. I mean, I see that. I mean, I see that, but I don't really know. But the thing is you already have Luna. So like, I don't know. I guess Vader could come up and try to challenge Luna, but it's like super, super low cap. So it'd be like, it'd be like extremely high risk. It would be like extremely high risk, extremely high reward. Uh, MMF Finance is the one on Kronos. DeFi, I actually have heard of MMF Finance. NF, uh, NFTs that have a use case is exploding. You know, like new, like new DeFi protocols either like completely drop dead or explode. It's one of the two. Most of them drop dead, but there are a couple that do explode. Kronos just like recently came up. Something went wrong. You can close and try the transaction again, but if you had multiple errors, it may be for a few reasons. I don't really use MetaMask myself. I mean, there might be something wrong with their MetaMask or some security thing. I'm not really sure. Kronos is only recently getting, like, Kronos, honestly, is only recently starting to get some attention. A decentralized marketplace is called the Black Web. Ever buy from there? Nope. I have not bought from there. I mean, technically, like, a lot of DEXs are decentralized, like, decentralized marketplaces. Is MetaMask hackable? I personally think like everything's hackable. <laughs> That's my opinion. Like pretty much everything's hackable. I heard someone lost money from MetaMask hacks. I'm sure plenty of people have lost money from MetaMask. I mean, like they're not really hacks. It's mainly, it's more like phishing schemes than hacks. What do I think about Hedron? I don't really know much about Hedron. I mean, look, I, I have heard of Hedron before because someone else asked me to check it before. But the thing is, I don't remember the details of all these smaller coins. There's like thousands of them. Like, yeah, I'm actually not like the tech support hotline for like these apps because I don't, I didn't develop any of these apps. My guess is like there's something wrong with their MetaMask or there's something wrong with their security thing. 
MetaMask has had a couple of problems lately, though. So, I mean, you have to ask their support team. And don't get tricked into, like, a fake support team. MetaMask is hackable if you give out your seed phrase or click a link you're not supposed to. Yes, yes. Is that like Cardano Lend? I mean, I think lending platforms... Lending platforms actually might come under attack from the SEC next because they're actually easy to target. Whereas like DeFi platforms sometimes are hard to target. <laughs> would Russia adopting more crypto push the price up? Right now, that would actually put crypto at risk, but I don't think the European countries are going to do anything about crypto because it's actually helping Ukraine right now. And, I mean, like, Russian people are already buying it, but their funds are pretty limited right now, besides the oligarchs. Some stole uh, straight out of my Coinbase account, though, SIM swap two years ago. Did Coin did Coinbase ever give those back? Because, like, I guess the SIM swap isn't really Coinbase's fault, though. It's more of, like, your provider's fault. Uh... Yes, thank you for calling support. This is Bob. The answer is to roundhouse kick yourself in the face. That will solve all your problems. Although that is very hard to do. Very, very hard to do. I got Black Web, Silk Road have all been considered as taboo parts of crypto as well. I suppose. I mean, like Monero is probably going to get blacklisted sooner or later, but people will continue to use Monero. People would definitely continue to use Monero, whether it's blacklisted or not. Governments can shut down money market protocols if they're, de if they, if they're decentralized. Like, you mean if they're not decentralized, right? Like, governments can definitely sh shut down money market protocols if they're not decentralized. I'm going into Dash. I really wouldn't be going to Dash, man. Like, Dash was popular, like, years and years ago. And surprised that you can use it to buy gifts using Dash Direct. Don't know if it would be anything, but my gut says it's potential based on what is going There is local Monero where you can buy and sell cashola. I mean, look, I think Monero will continue to be used whether they ban it or not. I mean, regardless of that, yeah. I mean, Monero is kind of like the dark web money at this point. So it's going to get used. It's, it's, it'll have limited use. It'll have limited use. But it'll get used. Like it definitely has like limited use. Yeah, but just because they were popular years ago doesn't mean they're bad. That's true. It doesn't really mean they're bad just because they're... Um... It doesn't really uh, mean that they're actually bad. But... The the thing is like I think like uh, I think they had their time. There's really nothing special about Dash anymore. Like the Masternode craze was back in 2018, and like a lot of those things just died. It's like Masternoding was kind of like staking, except like less sustainable. You can meet a person offline and buy and sell Monero. Interesting. What's the tornado protocol about isn't it btc laundering uh, let me actually look at that tornado protocol t core dude that's like a really this is like a small shit coin there's like 87 dollars worth of volume If you're looking at Tornado Cash, it might be. I mean, I've heard of Tornado Cash before. People have actually shielded before. Decentralized non-custodial privacy solution. That could definitely be like a money laundering operation. No, no joke. 
Only the elite use Monero. Now, nah, people who want to... Basically, people who want to, like, get around the government... Like, doesn't, don't want government prying on them, basically use Monero. I don't use Monero. I have nothing to hide. I don't... And plus, like, I basically invest for money anyways. Bab, they actually had a... Uh, did they ever get the banking license? Like, what the hell is Bab doing now? Because I know, like, uh, Bab earlier, that they were trying to get some kind of weird banking license from Europe, and I'm not really sure if they ever bought it. I am not feel, uh, familiar with Altura. I, I have no idea if they ever got their banking license. And then, like, I, th I think they were trying to do something with the DEX, like, a year ago, and I never heard anything about that as well. Tornado Cash is the mixer? Oh, yeah, yeah. Mixers will eventually get banned because mixers, I do think it will all eventually get banned because the government's going to like, the government's really not going to like them. Does like, that's like a basic tool for money laundering. Does Monero have uh, like its own exchange to buy and sell? I don't think so. I mean, but a lot of exchanges do have Monero. So we are more likely to see 30 K BTC than 50 K. I don't know. I mean, I feel like we're going to hang around 39 K. Dude, stop shilling, man. I'm not going to go visit the site. Don't know if Dash is dead, but Vo using Voyager to get 3% interest, they can buy gift cards to merchants and actually spend Dash for restaurants. I, I know, like, Dash is supposed to be popular in Venezuela, but I'm not actually sure if it is or not. Like, they keep on touting that it's, uh... They keep on touting that it's, like, being used in Venezuela, but I don't really think so. I think Venezuela still really likes Bitcoin. Yes, I know Monero has local Monero. But, the, but I mean, like, if you can, I mean, if there's ways to cash out, people will definitely use it. I, I'm sure, like, the dark web, I'm sure the dark net has actually provided ways to actually, uh, for Monero to actually thrive. I'm, I'm not surprised at that. Small bag of Monero ain't a bad idea. Maybe not. I mean, I'm not interested in it myself. I personally don't invest in privacy coins. But, you know, if you're interested in privacy coins, it's probably the one to go. Yeah, I really wouldn't go into Dash. Like the ma like the master nodes, the ROI is really not that good. Coins that are most in that are in most exchanges will be used mostly for trading, transferring. That's true. I mean, like coins have their own coins actually have their own utility, but a lot of the a lot of the value is going to be trading and transferring or like investing. That's why I see like that's why I can see coins as securities because like that's mostly what people use them for just investments. Look, look Dash basically died after like 2018, 2019. 2018 was like its last breath because like Masternode coins were all the hype in the summer of 2018, and then people were like, "Yeah, this is crap," and they didn't really care much for it anymore. What the volatility was about today. Not really. I mean, today actually wasn't that volatile. The stock market, sure, but not the crypto market. I think it was just like like escalating tensions in Ukraine and also like the Fed meeting coming up this week. I think those are probably the two things. We also talked about that earlier in the stream. Off Mon you can meet people off Monero and buy it for cash. Yep. I mean, you can meet anyone like in the back corner alley and transfer Bitcoin for money, but you might get pwned that way too. I mean, you can do private crypto transfers in a dark alley somewhere. I just wouldn't. Like you could technically transfer Bitcoin like in the dark alley on Fifth Street, but realistically, no no one's gonna do that. Can mine on PC too or GPU? I don't I, I don't really know which algorithm Monero is. I think it's GPU, but I'm not sure. I think like all non-ASIC mining is basically GPU at this point. Nash, I've heard of that like once or twice. I've only really heard about it once or twice. Wasn't that an exchange? Wasn't Nash like an exchange? How are they doing? I think Nash was like an exchange. I mean, it's done okay. It hasn't done too bad compared to everything else since like July and uh, July and uh, November. It hasn't done too bad. The the new app to grow your cash, ten percent interest on your savings. That's not bad. That's that. But I mean, that's it's pretty average though. It's not bad. Ten percent, pretty average. 
Dark alleys where everything goes down. Definitely, man. Gotta love those. Gotta love those dark alleys. Gotta love them dark alleys. How about Nano didn't buy any? Yeah, I think Nano's like time like is has come and gone. It massively hyper pumped last cycle, but I just don't think it's gonna get there this cycle. Like I don't know if anyone's actually using Nano anymore. Like Nano touted it being the fastest blockchain, and while that might be true, no one cared. Monero lets me buy the I see. I mean, I can definitely see why the dark web would want its own coin. I mean, the criminal enterprising is like secondary, but like I can see why they actually would want to actually have their own coin. Dak pumping like crazy, dark alley coin, 100x coming. Maybe, maybe. Maybe I should make a dark alley coin, but that would be like a giant target for like the government entity to like completely pwn me. TGB is super fast too. There's a lot of coins that are, most coins are like uber fast. You know, like if I transfer any Gen 3 coin, I essentially can get it like before I open up the other wallet. It's not a big, that, that's not a big thing anymore. Uh, check out uh, Dash Direct. They are releasing prepaid debit card. Nice, nice. Yeah, the whole like no KYC thing. I think that's just gonna like, like stuff that's no KYC is gonna get hunted down by the government. Faster than the cheapest, but like I said, transaction speed, not every, uh, not everything anymore in crypto. Yeah, like transaction speed, if it's like, if it's like, it doesn't need to be the fastest. It just needs to be fast enough. And most coins today are fast enough. Yeah, but then like Bitcoin's not truly private. So they need a new private coin to like get around stuff. Yeah, that's, that's the main problem with DGB. No one's actually using DGB. If people were actually like using DGB, it actually might not be a bad investment, but like no one cares about DGB. So yeah, DGB, uh, not really a thing right now. Definitely not really a thing right now. Is it safe to keep dot staked on Kraken? I probably, I'm not really sure. Buying drugs from the dark web is extremely dangerous. They can send you toxic chemicals. They can, they indeed can send you toxic chemicals. Buying anything from the dark web is kind of scary. Just meeting someone in a dark alley is kind of scary a lot of times because you can get just like you can just get destroyed. Are there new private coins or just the same POW coins? Um, I'm not really sure. I think there's this. I think there's new. I, I think there's new like. Uh, I think most people still use the old old, old POW coins. I wonder how much it costs to actually 51% attack Monero because I I feel like someone can do it pretty easily. The hash rate for Monero can't be that big. Yeah, DGB had like zero marketing, so they're like a technology without a use case. That's why they never went anywhere, honestly. Uh, if you don't know, like I wouldn't bother trying getting on the dark web. It's like one of those things where you either know or you don't. I, I can't really think, is Zcash POW? I mean, Z, I, I guess Zcash isn't truly a privacy coin, but is Zcash actually POW? I know Monero's POW, but is Zcash actually POW? I'm not really sure. Do you think the government can attack, 51% attack Monero to kill it? I mean, yeah, it doesn't, I don't think it costs that much to 51% attack Monero. Yeah, someone just mentioned Vader earlier. It's like, it's, 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 it looks like it's like a junior version of Luna. But eventually, I don't know, man. If they haven't gotten a use case in the last like six, seven years, I don't know if they'll actually get one. If ETH 2.0, uh, do you think locked ETH? I think some people will sell because like, you know, from the time they started locking, Ethereum's gone up quite a lot, even now. So that 2021 was a false pump for most altcoins. It wasn't a false pump. I mean, it pumped pretty hard and most coins are still way above when they, when it, uh, most coins are still way above before it started pumping. So I wouldn't call it a false pump, definitely. It might have not been the big one, like as big as the one in 2017, sure. But you know, like each successive bull market, it's not going to be as one as the big, uh, big as the one before it. Zcash is a fork of BTC. Yeah, okay. 
Are you on the bear market? Yeah, I mean, it's it's definitely bearish right now. 2020, like, er, like, like, a, 2021, like, was alt season. Like, you had, like, a big one back at the beginning of the year, and then you have, like, a small one towards the end of the year. I guess Zcash was proof of work, but now it's proof of stake since November 20. So they converted. Okay. There's not a lot of stuff running on Zcash, so it wouldn't be too hard for them to convert, I guess. I guess Zcash was proof of work. It's proof. Look, Crypto Loaf, the, the way we know something's a shitcoin is if someone just like comes in here just to shill it. That's basically how we know someone's some something that something's a shitcoin and not to buy it. So you're not really helping your coins cause because no one's gonna buy it now. You just spent like half an hour shilling it. All season in 2025. I don't think it'll be. I don't think it'll quite. I don't think you need to wait until 2025. Honestly. Look, going around, going around to, realistically, um, going around to different chat rooms to shill your coin like crazy isn't something that's, act, is not a viable strategy for promoting your coin. Because that just shows people you're like desperate. If you think about in the Monero macro between has been consolidating, I suppose, uh, since February 1st, I think, yeah. Have you seen the new Apple M1? I have not. Uh, it's like an annoying commercial. If the commercial is corny, I take it to, to avoid that product. Yeah, if you're basically doing everything you can to get like, if you're basically, like I've never even seen you on this chat before. Like, if you're a regular and you ask me to check out something, I might check it out. But if you're just, like, some random person that just comes in here and tries to shill the hell, hell out of a coin, I'm just going to tell everyone not to buy it. Because it's obvious to me that you're, like, desperately trying to shill it. And, yes, coins can pump. Coins can actually pump pretty massively uh, when they first... Like, coins can actually pump pretty massively when they first launch. But that's basically when I tell everyone not to buy it. Because it's, like, overhyped. It's overhyped and overpumped. Especially if you're one of those coins that has like a massive supply. Especially if you're one of those coins that has like a massive supply and you're like the value of your coin has like 10 zeros in front of it. That's something I definitely don't tell people to buy. Every once in a while, every once in a while, you essentially like... Uh, Every once in a while, you get a gem like Shiba Inu and stuff, but eventually that, that's going to crash. Has CH addressed why he lied about having a degree yet? No, I don't think his followers are forcing him to actually address it. That doesn't surprise me. Follow, like These clubs are kind of cultish anyways. Can you, uh, can you check out Kyber Network, one of my favorite lending? Yes, Safe Moon was a shit coin. It still is kind of a shit coin. Look, all these coins are going to die sooner or later. Like, Safe Moon basically has no purpose. A KNC is interesting. Oh, Kyber Network? Doge has been around forever, though. Like, it's, it's like the original meme coin. Best place to stake Algo? That would be kind of interesting. That would be kind of weird if the Bitcoin pumps when they raise rates. But, but like raising the rate right now is probably not going to affect Bitcoin. Like as, there's a certain basis. There's actually a certain increase in basis points that's already priced in. There's honestly like a certain increase in basis that's already been priced in. What do you think about ICX price this year? I don't really know much about Request Network. Um I hope ICX bursts up because I think it's like, I mean, it's getting, it's, it's gotten left behind. 
isn't sand a game? I think you can stake it within the game. Like, I don't really play... I don't actually play sandbox, but I think you can stake it within the game. Like, Shiba Inu, I'm still, like, not very bullish on overall. It could definitely pump. But the thing is, like, they were trying to build stuff on it. I don't know if anyone really succeeded in building stuff on it. I'm accumulating with no expectation. That's probably a good thing. If we go to ATH, great, but I'd rather pump start late year to 20, early 2023. I mean, if you don't have any expectations, that's perfectly fine. There's some devastating news about Anchor Protocol that I don't know about. or just It's probably a retrace. I mean, I don't really see any... Uh, I don't really see any... Uh, devast I didn't really see any devastating news um, about Anchor Protocol. Probably just a retrace. Yeah, definitely just a retrace. Looking at the graph, it's definitely just a retrace. I play paid attention to Phantom. Did it take a sh I see. I think I heard Anchor is shutting down. Can't remember. It was A and C or A and K. Was, I don't think so, right? I'm pretty sure it was just a retrace. I didn't hear that Anchor was shutting down. Maybe it is because it's unsustainable. Let me check. That would actually be pretty big. No, I don't think so. Um, their Twitter's right here. If they were shutting down, they would actually post some. I do think if they were shutting down, they would just post something on Twitter, and they haven't posted anything here yet. Yeah, I'm pretty sure it's not actually shutting down right now, unless there's, like, some headline. I don't think so. I think they're, like, raising rates later this week, but everyone expects it, though. But, like, the, the rates thing is priced in. I wouldn't be too worried about them raising rates. The rates thing, I think, is pretty much priced in. Unless they surprise raise it by 50 basis points, I think it's priced in. Just a little reminding that two decades ago, Apple almost went bankrupt. Anything can happen. That is true. That is true. They Then they invented the iPhone. Well, no, if you actually look at, if you actually look at Anchor Protocol, if you actually look at Anchor Protocol, um, if, I mean, if you just look at the graph, it's not really, it, it basically spiked up. It essentially spiked up in, uh, in, it basically spiked up like a week ago and now it's coming back down. Remember like two weeks ago, like, in the beginning of February, it was like a dollar three, and then it went up to like basically it basically went up to like five dollars. Now it's down to like two, so it's just coming down. There was a huge spike in volume like a couple of weeks ago, and now it's just coming down. So it's just basically retracing. It's not like there's I don't think there's any specific bad news for it, but it's just retracing right now. It's not much you can do about that. Yeah, I don't think there's any bombs and nukes coming. Luna is like bank. Most of their main app built. Anchor just finished its first year of inflation. Now it's deflating with APR, I guess. That could be it. But like they said they were going to try to keep 20 for a while. They can't keep 20 forever, I I'm I'm sure. But still, I'm not really sure. If FTX wasn't paying Brady NFL money? Probably not. Even Tom Brady sees hyperinflation coming and knows he, know he goes back to work. Nah, man, like, he just wants to win another Super Bowl. He wants to, like, he wants to cement his super uber legacy with another Super Bowl. He's getting old, though, like, how, how much longer can Tom Brady keep playing football? I mean, he's, like, five years older than LeBron James, and LeBron's already been playing forever. But then they do, they do actually protect Tom Brady, though. Like, they don't allow, they don't really allow anyone to even touch Tom Brady. Year or two, it goes down, but ANC price increases, supposedly. I mean, then that's a good time to, like, cash out. You think 20% can be sustainable for another two years? I personally think 20% can be sustainable if the market turns around. Yeah, but <clears throat> Michael Jordan was a lot younger when he quit and come back, though. Like, Jordan was a lot younger when he actually uh, quit and then came back. It's It's different. Tom Brady has been playing football for more than half his life. He doesn't know what else to do. He has plenty of things to do. He has all that money. He has a supermodel wife. I mean, 
You can find crap to do. I can't find the article. Maybe it was FUD spreading, but it was on Anchor. I don't think they're shutting down. I just haven't heard of that. I think like, I think it would have been pretty good news, big news if they shut down. And someone would have tweeted me. It was supposed to keep going, not dump from VCs. Yeah, but that never happens, man. If the VCs dump, like they're going to dump. You know that. It came down. It came from Doe Kwan that 20 it can be sustainable for two years. Okay, okay. LeBron's definitely not going to go play baseball. LeBron wants to play a year in the NBA with his kid. No, I think Michael Jordan will still be the GOAT. And then LeBron, LeBron's going to be number two. Basically, LeBron's basically just playing for stats at this point. Because the team's like, the, the team's awful right now. 10-year auto financing? That is freaking insane. Cars don't even last me 10 years, man. And now you're looking at 10-year auto financing. But the thing, like... The demand for cars is way up and the supply is not there yet. So I'll probably wait. I, I might have to wait another year for buying a car. I, I need like the supply chain issue to go away because I want, some, I just want some base models. I don't actually want like the advanced model. ETH bag holders are seeding. They've been flooding Luna for the past few months. Yeah, they've been, because they actually see Terra Luna as a threat now because Terra Luna's, Terra Luna took like the number two DeFi thing like for TVL like a while back. Westbrook gets paid one year, 42, 40 million, and that's what he delivers. Dude, they, look, that Westbrook trade was like one of the biggest mistakes in basketball ever. They could have had Buddy Hill. They, they could have actually had Buddy healed. And like kept Alex Caruso, but no, they had to go get Russell Westbrook, and now it's been like that's basically pretty much been a disaster. Uh, for some reason, the more far away you are from the U.S., the less you like loans and leverage. That's kind of weird because like so many people in the U.S. are obsessed with like high leverage loans and leverage, which like high leverage trades, which is pathetic. He has he has to be given goat status once he breaks the scoring record. Check. I don't see that man. Like that's a the, the scoring record's more of like a longevity thing. Whereas like Jordan was like Jordan's peak was so so dominant and his peak was fairly long. The two events that could crash cryptos. So one is actually like China coming into the war by helping Ru Russia militarily. And I do think Russia has actually asked for help. And the second one is that like the Fed like actually says like in May, we're going to raise interest rates by uh, 50 basis points. And we're going to be hawkish for the rest of the year. Those are the two events. Imagine paying 99 bucks a month for 10 years for Chevy Cruze. I don't really like baseball because I find it extremely boring. LeBron's kid, I think, is like 16 or something. I don't remember. 16 or 17. Remember, Dennis Rodman became a wrestler after he retired from ball. Okay. People would do it. Does LeBron run very fast? I'm sure he used to be faster when he was younger. Like, LeBron was like crazy athletic when he was younger. He's like, he's definitely lost. Like, LeBron's definitely lost a step now, but he was like crazy, crazy athletic. When he was younger, man. Bronny is 17. Yeah, but you know the thing is, I don't think Bronny is one of those straight to NBA. Uh, I don't think like Bronny is one of those straight to NBA players. He doesn't seem ready. Like he's like a forced, he's actually like a four star recruit uh, for college. And four star recruits aren't ones and dones usually. Unless Bronny has, like, massive, massive growth. I mean, people would pick Bronny just to play with LeBron, though. I watched the G League Lakers a bit. Mac is doing really well in the G League. Dude, the Lakers need to, like... Dude, the Lakers need to, like, sign Mac McClung and demote Russell Westbrook back to G League. That's what they really need to do. They actually need to like demote Russell Westbrook back to G League and like bring up Mac McClung because their team would actually be better. Jordan had a team of Hall of Famers with the Bulls, and he had the best coach to take Scotty away, and he does not. That's true. That's true. But I mean, LeBron has had pretty good teammates as well. It's just that like the teams he played against were better. 
Bronny got one thing that most do not. He got the hookups. He does get the hookups from his dad. But you know the thing is, Pablo, like Zaire Wade had Dwayne Wade as dad, and like no one would draft. It's not like he's getting drafted anytime soon. But then, then again, Bronny's better than Wade's kid. But he's like number 30 or something in his class. And you need to be higher than number 30 in your class to be like NBA bound. Mike is a, is a better go-to player straight to the NBA. He's already a mil uh, millionaire and covered up with uh, Tats at 17. Yeah, Mikey, Mikey Williams is definitely like a better prospect right now, yes. I told you, Eric, he needs, he needs to be demoted to G League. I, I mean, like, the U.S. isn't really like a soccer nation, though. Like, we don't really watch soccer, so soccer's really not that big here. Like, the, the whole, like, MLS just isn't a big thing. They, they, they need to put Westbrook in D-League, dude. They definitely need to put Westbrook in D-League. And bring up Mac McClung. Man, that guy, I can't believe, I mean, that guy was like an MVP just a couple of years ago. Like, he like literally fell off a cliff. Like his, his his game has completely fallen off a cliff the last two years. Sad, dude. It's so sad. And like the thing is, like he ha he he's not willing to change his game or come off the bench. Giannis will be the best big player in history. Maybe, maybe. Giannis is definitely in prime. Like he's just getting to his prime. That's the scary part. He's like what twenty six. Giannis is like twenty six, man. It's weird that you would talk. It's weird that you talk in, uh, like it's weird that you talk and uh, talk about soccer in Chinese because China sucks at soccer. Like China spends so much money in their soccer team and they and they still suck at soccer. Uh, I mean, the best big play right now. I don't like right now. I would say Giannis is probably like one of the, if not the best player in the league. Like you could say KD is better than Giannis because KD is just a much better shooter. I think I, I think Harden. It, it's easier for Harden to play with people than uh, Westbrook. Do you hear Matty Johnson said Westbrook in national television? I see. I mean, I've seen some of LeBron's reactions to like Russell Westbrook missing like easy shots. It's really bad. Asians can be pretty good at tennis as well. The thing is, like, Abe McGee, like, not enough, like, Asians don't really take sports all that seriously. Like, basically, like, for Asians, like, sports is a hobby. It's something to put on your resume for college. It's not something that you make a living off of for most Asians. No, I didn't play ball in college. It was based solely off of athleticism. The way he's playing now was eventually going to come because you can see. That's true. Like, he, he still can't shoot. But the thing is, like, Westbrook is, like, 33. He's not, like, 37, 38 like LeBron. So he should be okay, still okay now. But that guy can't, sh he can't shoot. China is demanding a bio account. Uh. Uh, U.S. bio uh, account of U.S. bio military activities in Ukraine. All right, that's great. We don't have any military. We don't have any bio labs in Ukraine. That's something like the Russian media made up. You, you know, you know why China is so good at ping pong? Because the Ping Pong Federation was the first to actually acknowledge that China was the real China and not Taiwan. That's why China is so good at ping pong. Because they were the first to acknowledge like the mainland. That's true. They hit the books. They don't hit the courts. I think the average retirement age probably like early mid thirties. Early mid thirties average retirement age. He's past his prime. That was uh, this is the best he's going to be. It's true. Now he's way past his prime. Now his prime was like four or five years ago. Well, the thing is, like, Russia already, look, Russia already controls a lot of those territories where they said the U.S. actually has biolabs. They can just go in and check themselves, you know. They honestly, like, can check themselves. 
But the thing is, like Asian players, unless you're like Yao Ming and you're seven foot five, they don't generally try to like try to make the NBA or anything. They want to be they want to be doctors and lawyers. They don't really plan on being professional sports players for like a very young age. Uh, no, I don't think the U.S. should implement that. The Asian system, I don't think, would work very well in the United States. Basketball is a big deal in the PH. The Philippines, maybe. But the thing is, like, people... People who come from smaller islands do tend to be shorter. It does, it's not as pronounced in humans as other species, but it, that does actually give like that does put them at a disadvantage. The thing is like. If if what Russia's alleging is actually true, they like Ukraine. Ha it's it's kind of strange that Ukraine hasn't bought out the biological weapons yet at this point. It I mean like the weapons don't exist. Otherwise, they would have used them by now. Jeremy Lin was our exile. Well, yeah, but Jeremy Lin was actually born in the States, though. He's, like, born in California. And the thing is, like, he says he was Taiwanese-American, which he is. My, my parents are from Jiangsu. Well, I'm from Jiangsu as well. But, I mean, like, I'm, like they were pretty traditional with Chinese parents. Like, sports was, like, a fun thing. It was never something to be taken that seriously. Like, we were never going to be professional athletes. What New York cities are most likely to be nuked? New York and Washington, D.C. Maybe San Francisco. Maybe Los Angeles. Like the big ones. Essentially the big ones. Yeah, realistically, if, like, if there were bioweapons in Ukraine, they probably would have used them by now. The fact that they haven't used them just says they don't have them. Just like, you know, like, just like the weapons of mass destruction in Iraq, if they had them, they probably would have used them when we invaded. But since they didn't actually use them, that means they didn't have them in the first place. The, the Chinese system for, like, training sports stars in, like, basketball or soccer is all wrong. They basically pick people, like, they see that are talented who are really young, and then essentially, like, they try to train them up. They don't, they, they're not, they don't come out of a competitive system. Do you think the price of cars will go down? I personally think it'll go down once the supply chains get back in order. Right now, the supply chains are wreaking havoc. It's because of the, it's because of the, um, the chips. It's because of the chips right now. And, like, just, like, there's... I mean, like, there's parts that aren't available, I guess. Look, Putin essentially just made up an excuse to try to make the West look to try to make the West look bad, and it isn't really working for them. Yeah, but Fablo, if you actually sell your car now, you have to buy another one, though. That's the thing.
Yeah, but the Big E32, realistically, half the people in the NBA can't guard anyone. It's all about, it's more about offense now. Do you buy any low cap gun? I haven't bought any. No, I haven't bought any myself. If we go to war, depends what kind of war. Nuclear war? A couple of days, everyone will be dead by then. All right, guys. That's going to be it for uh, today. I'll be back tomorrow. Like and subscribe. Hit that bell notifications button, and I will be back later. And I demand tribute next time. I'll see you guys later.